Baraka, you, you, you explored a kind of sensuality in your poetry making in relation to the first poem you um, articulate your kind of perform today. And I'm just kind of, I'm in, I'm in this conversation with myself and the brother here about the kind of the relationship between people and people and the faith and the faith. Now, sometimes I feel sometimes people overcrank it a bit and get a bit too intense and a bit lost on the way to kind of party zog. And other people are really like passive and can understand the engagement of people in relation to how it should be. We're all, you know, and I just want to understand this kind of like in quite, uh, say, kind of levels of articulation and depth you're exploring in your connection in relation to faith but also how one should observe oneself and one's relationship with our human people, friends, family, women, folk, etc, etc. We should be able to explore, we shouldn't be able to define, we should not be put off by one individual cranking it up too far to the point of it becoming a really weird message, which I kind of think is not normal to project to people. And I think, and I just wanted to know, is there any midpoint? Is there a barrier? Is there a zone where we should not go? Or are there zones we've not even touched yet as Muslims? I'm not 100% sure what, what, uh, what the question is. What, what the question is, is about language, the use of language and how we are as people today. It's about the articulation. I think someone touched upon it earlier on in this evening's event that it becomes, to, we should not go to those places where we really explore those passions and those dimensions. But sometimes in spoken word culture, especially from what I've heard over the last 20 years and listening to hip hop and lots of other things, you get to a point where you kind of go, this is right. And even in the room today, people are going, come on, lad, come on. I know there's a passion there, there's an articulation. But at the same time, we are, we are individuals. And it's just about exploring language. And, yeah, understanding that we are quite mature individuals on that, and, it's, and we can articulate that as a language, as modern day Islamic people. And I'm just trying to, as a poet, I'm trying to get out. where you're coming from with it. But what do you think about it all? You mean we can like soul clap and like get down? Oh <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, should people? Yes, I believe so. I think that's what it's all about. I think you can start traversing as far as you want, really. Yeah, I mean, under that, you know, the, the Sharia is there and it's wide, and I think there's... Yeah. I went to a Hadra last night. We got down big time. <laughs> Sheikh Babaka. May Allah bless him. You know. And, uh, you know, yeah. I think there's some manifestations of Islam that are afraid of, like, their sensuality and, like, the body. Like, the Prophet and his companions used to wrestle in the mosque. Imagine if you walked into a mosque and a bunch of people were wrestling. Especially men. Grown men wrestling yeah. each other, maybe with their shirts off. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you'd probably freak out. But that's the Sahaba. You know, uh, be pleased with them. And um, I think ultimately the point, you know, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, you know, everything in this world is cursed except for dhikr and that which is an aid there too. And so. Many people, Muslims, get this idea that that means, you know, you know, the flower is cursed, this house is cursed, my mother is cursed, everything is cursed, the whole world is cursed, you know, and they have this anger, anger. But if we're critical, and if we look at this, uh, the hadith is very profound because it's a statement about human consciousness and subjectivity. Because another way to say it is that nothing in this world is cursed in and of itself. It's only your inability to remember a God by it that is cursed. Right? Because nothing in this world is cursed except for dhikr and that which is an aid there too. I mean, everything in this world is cursed except for dhikr and that which is an aid there too. So, for one person, you know, a flower is something that, you know... They'll think, oh, if I get this flower, I can get with this girl in my class. and You know what I mean? It's actually a veil for them. But somebody sees it, and they smell it, and they're reminded of beauty, or they're reminded of Fatima or Zahra, or whatever it is, and all of a sudden, they're drawn near. And so, um, you know, La ilaha illallah is the outermost out and the innermost in. And everything, every manifest form is pointing to that. And so the path is just 
trying to realize that and everything. So, yeah, I mean, the Sharia is wide and important too, though you can't just be like, well, I'm remembering Allah while I'm drinking this alcohol and like at the club, you know, make it bigger. No, the Sharia is there too, so I think it's wide and the bounds are well known. But, yeah, don't be afraid to get down. <laughs>